Hello everyone, today I am going to walk you through the process that I use to keep myself organized through the seed sowing season. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel 90% Native. My name is Michelle and I grow native plants, I garden for wildlife, I am growing my own vegetables and teaching myself how to preserve them. When you have a lot of seed packets, a lot of vegetables, cutting flowers, and things like that, that you are going to be sowing indoors and directly as we lead up to last frost dates, then you have a lot of packets and dates to organize. And by having a process to follow, then you will be able to set yourself up for success and save yourself a lot of frustration by knowing what you are going to plant and when. So let's talk about supplies first. I just mentioned these storage, these photo storage cases. So you get the case and then you get 16 of these individual uh, photo cases and these are where your packets of seeds are going to go. So you can get these a lot of places, Amazon, Michaels, things like that. I will put an Amazon link below. I'll put a link to the clear cases and then also I have these rainbow cases here where I store my seeds for the majority of the year. So I'll put those links below and then you can also get these, like I said, at Michael's. So if you go to Michael's to get these photo storage cases, make sure that you are getting them on sale when they are $15. So right now we are in January of 2023. You should be able to get these at Michael's for $15. If not, and you want them immediately, there will be links below. So next I am using Sharpies to actually label the individual cases and I have two colors. I have red and black. Red is for um, seeds that I am going to direct sow and the black is for seeds that I am going to sow indoors. Now the Sharpie will come off with alcohol um, or Windex, something like that. So you can remove it for when you reuse these cases next season. Then I have post-it notes. The post-it notes are just for taking notes so that I can quickly see what's inside each of the cases. And finally, of course you need your seeds. So my millions and billions of seed packets that I have here. And then one optional uh, note is that I have dry erase markers and um, chalk markers and you can use these if you, while you're sitting here organizing your seeds and figuring things out where you can quickly put a temporary note on the lids of these cases like for instance right here I have that this is going to be a, a case with seeds that I will directly sow into the garden. Okay so I think that covers it for the supplies that I am using and so i think we should just go ahead and get started the very first thing that you need to do if you don't already know is to go out and find your last expected frost date for the season so how you do that is just go to google and in the uh the search bar type last frost date and then your zip code so for me i would type exactly last frost date 20171 most likely the results that'll pop up will be from the farmer's almanac and i definitely recommend using the farmer's almanac and poke it around there because they have tons of great information but it should take you directly to your last frost date and if not or if you just want the link i will put it in the description below if you're new to sowing seeds, the last frost date is important to know because that is how you're going to figure out when you are going to sow your seeds indoors or outdoors and you're going to use that last expected frost date as kind of the guide to figuring everything out. Okay, so the next step is to sort all your seeds by the type of flower or the type of vegetable. So right here in this little stack I have some lettuce, and then I have a bunch of tomatoes. If you don't already have your seeds organized, then go ahead and do this. Now, a lot of you probably already have your seeds organized by type. The reason why you're going to do this is because seeds of the same type typically have about the same growing requirements. So if all your tomatoes um, are supposed to be sowed indoors six to eight weeks before your last expected frost date then you already have all of those together and you don't need to go in different places to find them 
The next thing you are going to do is organize these types of vegetables and flowers by the planting interval. So what I mean by that is look on the back of one of your seed packets and it should say when to start indoors or outdoors and that is the planting interval that I am referring to. So you will see here on the back of this packet, I believe it says to start indoors three to four weeks before the last frost date. At this point, you are going to have your seeds in different piles. And so you're gonna have so right here in front of me, I have five weeks before the frost date, four weeks, and then three weeks before the frost date. So once you have your piles, now is the time to go ahead and, and start tweaking when you're gonna plant some of these things if you need to. I have my seed organization started already, so I am doing 12 weeks, 10 weeks, eight, six, five, four, three, two. These are the different um, dates that I am going to sow before my last expected frost. And then in this pile are all my seeds that I am direct sowing. So I have ones that are going into the ground 10 weeks before, six weeks before, four weeks before, and these are my beans that'll be direct sowed two weeks after my last frost date. And next what you wanna do is find a specific date that you are going to sow these seeds. And to do that, what you're gonna do is you are going to pull up a calendar, whether on your phone or your computer or on your day planner, and you're going to count back the number of weeks that you need for when you need to start your seeds indoors. So as an example, I'm going to use this pile of seeds and I am going to sow my seeds on Fridays and then this pile of seeds needs to be started indoors four weeks before my last expected frost date. So I'm gonna pull up my calendar and I'm gonna to go to April 21st, which is my last frost date. It usually ranges between um, April 18th and April 21st. So I pull up April 21st and then I'm gonna count backwards four weeks and I'm gonna to come to March 24th, 2023. So that is the date that I want to sow this um, pile of seeds. Now to keep myself organized, I get my individual case and with the black Sharpie, because these are being sewed indoors four weeks before, I'm going to use black ink and I am going to write on the side of the case so that I can see it when it's sitting up in the case that date. So right here, you can see that I put March 24th. And then on the other side, I put an I. That I stands for inside. So these seeds are gonna be sowed March 24th inside. For an example of the seeds that I sow directly, I have done it in red and you'll see these are gonna be sewed outside on March 24th, and then I put a D on the other side of the case. So visually, when I'm looking through the top of this case, I can see dates and I can see Ds and Is to know whether things are going to be directly sewed or if they're gonna be sewed indoors. And that is really all the information I need if I need to just go and grab the case that I am doing, uh, I am sewing that day. The next thing I do once I have that all figured out is I get my post-it notes and on my post-it notes, I write the number of weeks before or after the frost date that we're working with. I put a dash in either D or I for direct or inside. Then I put the date that I am sowing these seeds and then I generally list what's going to be in that packet or that um, case. And the reason why I say I generally put, uh, I list the um, seeds, like I'll just put herbs on some um, or beans, things like that. I don't go into great detail because the post-it is small and I have a spreadsheet that I will share with you guys so that you can keep track of what you're doing and all the very nitty gritty specifics. So now when we have the seeds in the storage case, I can see from the top what date the different um, cases need to be sewed. I can see whether I'm sewing them indoors or directly into the ground. If I pull out the case and I just wanna know some basic information, I can see just generally what seeds I am doing at that time. And then when we talk about the very specifics, if I needed to know information there, I would go to my spreadsheet. Finally, just pack your storage box up 
with all of your individual seed cases and store that um, storage bin in a cool, dry place. And probably somewhere that you're gonna to remember to look. <laughs> So you don't forget to sow your seeds. Also, if this is content that appeals to you, I would love it if you would do me a favor and subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell button so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. So guys, that's pretty much the process that I use to keep myself organized as I am sowing seeds coming up to and then weeks after my last frost date. These are the supplies that I use, and this really helps. I'm telling you, if you have things organized like this, and you're doing a lot of seeds, and if you're able to quickly just grab the pack that you're sowing and then go about your business, you don't have to think, what seeds do I need to do? Is this the right time? All that kind of stuff. You just take it and you go. This is going to save you a lot of time. It may take a little bit of time to get this all um, put together for the season, but once you do, you're going to be happy that you did. I'm really hoping that I was able to explain this in a very simple way. If not, if you have any questions at all, please put a comment below and I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Happy gardening and I will catch you again next time. Mm -hmm.